21st meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Planning Board is now in session. First item on the agenda is the election of officers. Um, the planning, the zoning board ordinance requires that the planning board elect a chair and vice chair every year for a, uh, and any one member can serve a maximum of two terms or two years. So, Carol Ann. <laughs> I'd like to nominate Joe for uh, chair. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All opposed. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan's you getting his hand. I thought you were your hand. Aha, so it must be unanimous. <laughs> all right, all in favor? <laughs> Great. And then does anyone wish to nominate? Someone. Someone. I, I have a nomination for vice chair. Jim, Jim Hubner. Is there a second? Probably not, no. <laughs> Andrew seconds, all in favor? It's unanimous. Great, congratulations, Jim. <laughs> congratulations, Joe. <laughs> congratulations, Joe. All right, the first item on the agenda is the approval of minutes from the December 17th meeting. Does anyone have any uh, comments? Or corrections? Move we approve the minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? It's unanimous. I just want to let everyone know that um, our minute secretary is um, recuperating, oh. and therefore I'll be doing the minutes for tonight's meeting. She'll be okay? Yep, she's in rehab, so should be fine. She's hoping to come back. Right. Got to be careful about the word rehab. Yeah. It's a different connotation. <laughs> Physical rehab. <laughs> okay, the first item on the agenda tonight is new business. Jay Cox is requesting review to extend the Edgecombe Way private road located in the area of 75 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to alter 3,988 square feet of RP2 wetland. The planning board has previously approved a combined Edgecombe Way private road private access way. The application will be reviewed for compliance with section 1979 private roads and section 1983 resource protection permit. So can you introduce yourself and then do your presentation? Yeah, good evening, I'm Jay Cox. I'm here for KGM LLC uh, to in fact discuss the extension of uh, previously approved Edgecombe Way. Um, Edgecombe Way is located at 75 Ocean House Road, pretty much right across from Canterbury Way, or very close to Canterbury Way, which uh, goes up into the Canterbury uh, uh, condominium. This is the indicated uh, dark border is the, the parcel we're talking about. So first, uh, just a short review of what has been approved. This is the approved Edgecombe Way. Uh, it is, it's comprised of an 18-foot traveled way within a 35-foot right-of-way. Uh, there's a hammerhead turnaround incorporated in the design. Uh, with the then existing drive, which is this portion, this is actually um, there right now. So with this portion right here, it extends about 225 feet from Ocean House Road. The private road, private access way was approved in November of 2017, but it has not been built in, in July of 2018. <clears throat> the original developers sold the parcel to KGM LLC, which is Skip and Chris Murray. Uh, the approval is with two waivers. Uh, first, 18-foot uh, traveled way instead of 22 in the standards, and a 35-foot uh, right-of-way versus 50 feet in the standards. The entire drive, with the exception of this portion of the, the uh, turnaround, is 
within a 35 foot right of way, which is located on the abutting parcel of the Clarks. These are the, this is the Clarks right here. With the private access way, uh, they created lot two, right in this area. And right now, this is the entirety of the parcel. So lot two and the rest of that triangular piece is the parcel we're talking about. Utilities were proposed to go in the right of way and also through a separate easement along the property line of, of lot one, right through here. So to describe the site just a little bit, uh, this is sloping land. It drops approximately east to west, so this is roughly north up in this orientation. It's mostly wooded. This is still currently wooded as well. It's indicated as a tree line here, but this would be post-construction. Uh, the parcel is about 68,000 square feet. There's two upland areas, one in this uh, area, and then one over here. And these two uh, uplands are separated by an RP2 wetland all through here. Water flow on this site is generally uh, south, southeast to northwest. So the water flows uh, slowly through this wetland and then gets necked down through a very narrow portion of the wetland right in here. Uh, at its minimum, it's about 10 feet wide. And then this wetland widens back up again on the abutter. So we're interested in extending Edgecombe Way about 275 feet to, to uh, access the upland. Uh, this requires a private road review and also a resource protection permit to impact uh, the RP2 to construct the drive and install utilities. We're proposing the same waivers, that's 18 foot traveled way uh, within a 35 foot right of way, but we are also constructing uh, two foot grass shoulders on each side of the, the 18 foot traveled way. As the extended road would create frontage, which uh, might well be used by abutters to create lots, we've agreed to size uh, all the utilities uh, such that they can handle a maximum of three additional lots. In other words, this is the Clark property, potentially something over in here, something in here, this lot, and then the approved lot. So the maximum we see is a total of four, and all the utilities would be the size to accommodate that. <clears throat> All the utilities will be within the, within the right of way. We're proposing a T turnaround at the end of the road. Uh, the fire chief uh, wants the, the turnaround at the end of the road. Uh, this turnaround meets the standards of alternative two in appendix D of the subdivision ordinance. It can be negotiated by a B40 vehicle. Uh, the right-of-way is slightly different than uh, how it's drawn in the, uh, the ordinance, and I'll, I'll explain that just a little bit later. Uh, we analyzed four different options for a turnaround, and given the constraint of the location at the end of the road, um, we found this to be the best option. Uh, in doing our, uh, our analysis, we had uh, Mark Hampton of Mark Hampton Associates uh, come back in and look very intensely at the, the uh, wetland in the impact area. And he provided us with more data points through here, and we incorporated them in the, uh, in the model. Uh, we then overlaid four turnaround options into the model and moved them around and positioned them to uh, find the best variant and location. Um, although this, this one is a little more complicated in that it straddles three different uh, parcels, that being a Thomas parcel here, the Clarks here, and then KGM here. Um, all things considered, we determined it to be the best. <coughs> it minimizes wetland impact while moving much of the structure, that is the turnaround, away from the abutters who are in here. So basically, the for this to be accessed, the drive will definitely come this way. So the idea is the turnaround portion is uh, put over here as far away from the abutters as possible. And, and 
<coughs> finally, it's logical in its orientation on the site. <coughs> the drive and turnaround will be constructed and paved uh, to DOT and town standards. Uh, it does require easements on the abutting land of Clark and Thomas. Uh, we've incorporated a 36 inch culvert right through here. Um, it's buried one foot deep and it's uh, literally at the exact point where this watershed uh, leaves the area, the next down and leaves the area. Uh, 36 inches actually overkill for, uh, for dealing with the water on site, but while it raises this part of the road a bit, um, the, its benefit is that it, it preserves or better preserves contiguity between the parcels on both sides of the road and that relates to um, primarily to animals moving back and forth across the, the area and it's uh, recommended by Army Corps. Ongoing maintenance of the road and culvert would be in accordance with a road maintenance agreement uh, and the town has also granted the usual rights per the appropriate easement language. Stormwater is proposed to be directed on site by sloping the road uh, towards this parcel. In other words, tipping the road so the water runs this way as opposed to over onto the abutters. <coughs> also, to the greatest extent possible, any runoff will be directed into forested and vegetated areas for dispersal and uh, infiltration. The RP2 wetland on site is obviously a, a fairly large area which will accept and slow water as well. Once runoff leaves the parcel, it does so in uh, well-established channels, uh, swales, culverts, ditches that currently handle the flow from this area as well as multiple other flows throughout this watershed and that ultimately end up going across uh, Spurwink Avenue. Down, I'm going I'm to show you uh, a little bit more information on what's downstream from here in just a, just a couple minutes. But further downstream, there is a large uh, receiving wetland with a swale. There's also what looks like uh, a man-made ditch that goes around the perimeter of an uh, existing lot. And it, it seems that that ditch carries some flows, and then when the flows are uh, more than what can be uh, maintained in the ditch. It, uh, it goes through a swale down to uh, down to Spurwick Avenue. We analyzed the flow through our culvert for a 25 and 100 year uh, storm event. Per the RP standards, the proposed culvert far exceeds both both flows. Um, and then I'll get to Mr. Harding's letter and further requirements in just a, just a little bit. But we are working on analyzing flows from a two-year runoff event as well. As for permits, uh, no state permits are required for wetland impact uh, nor stormwater. The state thresholds are 4,300 square feet for wetland impact and 43,560 for stormwater. The proposed wetlands, wetland impacts fall under an Army Corps statewide permit, but they do require notification of any level of wetland impact, and we would certainly comply. Uh, Cape Elizabeth obviously has stringent requirements, which will be met. And then finally, all the work will be done to the relevant standards, including erosion and sediment control. On the resource protection permit, our request is to impact less than 4,300 square feet of our P2 wetland to construct the drive and turn around and install utilities. The actual calculated impact is 3,988 square feet. Once again, this is to access the upland area, uh, but would also potentially be in service to uh, four additional lots. Um, I've addressed the individual resource protection standards with the application, but did want to expand on one point related to the culvert sizing. The culvert we are proposing has far more capacity than what's required for water, uh, but as previously touched on, it's better for the site's wildlife inhabitants. Uh, we wrestled with this one a bit because when you raise the road, uh, you also widen it uh, because of the, the uh, slope, the, the fill slopes. Uh, in the end, though, we increased our square footage uh, 
hit in the end, although we increased the square footage of the uh, impact area uh, somewhat, uh, we feel that when the overall impact is taken into consideration, the 36 inch option is superior to a slightly lower and narrower road. Budding landowner feedback, landowner feedback, uh, we've received feedback from four of others. Uh, the Clark family to the north, uh, the Fletcher family to the south right here. Uh, the Ashmans and Gardeners are over in this area off of um, uh, Laputi Drive, but they're right close, they're close to the uh, property line right here. Uh, the Clarks are supportive. Uh, the Fletcher's main concern was a uh, beech tree right here. And we've obligated ourselves to keep that, and frankly, I don't see any reason why we, why we wouldn't. Um, the Ashmans uh, don't want the construction or road uh, near their house. Um, and then, though not definitively stated, I think it's fair to say the gardeners would prefer not to have uh, construction near them as well, and I get that. Uh, as for the Ashman's concerns, we've done our best to keep the majority of the turnaround away from their house. We've met with them and the gardeners to discuss siting, buffering, etc. Uh, we do appreciate the input and we'll work with them and anyone else in, in the area who has con concerns or constructive input. And on buffering and screening, um, I'd like to keep working with the abutting landowners to determine the most effective locations and methods for screening. We've discussed some options uh, with the Ashmans and gardeners, namely trees, a planted berm, fencing, etc. and we'd like uh, time to do our best in trying to uh, provide screening most agreeable to the abutters. In any case, this will be addressed and indicated on the next, uh, next drawing. And there are some recommendations and issues that I'm aware of, uh, namely uh, Mr. Harding's letter. Uh, we received his memo on 15 January. I'd like to comment on uh, his input. Um, several points. Uh, we don't really have any real comment. They're either general points or, or self-explanatory. Um, as for the others, uh, point number two, the exact utility location. Um, Mr. Harding suggested that the to be constructed utilities be indicated on the current plan. <clears throat> Actually, these were, were intentionally uh, truncated to avoid multiple uh, design changes and submissions pending approval from the, rel the relevant uh, utilities, primarily Portland Water District. Um, with the understanding and the plan note that these would be uh, cited within the right of way. Here's a pretty crude drawing of what we're dealing with for utilities. This is the extent of the utilities that will be installed. There is no scale here. This is just to kind of give you an overview of what we're going to be doing. So this is the pavement edge of Edgecombe Way. This is the right-of-way for Edgecombe Way. And over here it meets uh, Route 77, so that's the pavement edge and the right-of-way. The water district, uh, until very recently, was requiring main extensions in situations like this, but uh, Skip met with uh, Robert Bartels, and actually they've changed what they want. Uh, they want what they're calling a pitchfork, and that is a manifold right here. So what what they will be requiring is a, a water line from the main across 77, and they uh, they've said two inch copper that will go to a manifold. Uh, with curb stops on the edge of the uh, right-of-way line. And anything that's within 300 feet can go directly from there to this, the uh, structure site. And one of these uh, potential lots looks like it'll, you know, it'll reach, it'll go, uh, it's less than 300 feet. The other three look like they'll need to go to a meter pit. So meter pits will be set down here by the road, and then it'll leave the meter pits in inch and a half or maybe two inch uh, PVC and that will go to the uh, home sites. So this is what we're working on with the district and the other question is whether it's going to be on this side of the road or on this side of the road, but either way it's going to be uh, in the right of way next to the road. For sewer, uh, two inch PVC force main uh, tied in the municipal sewer in 77 and 
that will be fed by uh, inch and a half PVC coming from the various structures. Uh, and then lastly, phone and cabling power. Uh, this little diagram just indicates that a transformer will be set at a central location and the secondary power will come off and be fed to the uh, various sites. Uh, that secondary power is in two and a half inch PVC. Uh, this is also where the phone and cable will stub up uh, and that will be uh, sent to the various uh, house locations, uh, also in PVC, two and a half inch. The primary comes in from the pole. Uh, that'll be in two, uh, two and a half inch, uh, two, two and a half PVC pipes. That will go to the transformer location. And along with that, uh, four inch PVC, each for phone and cable. So that's, that's pretty much what we'll have in some orientation within that right away. In any case, all of this will be finalized, depicted, and approved by town staff, uh, their consultants, uh, preferably once um, prior to submission for approval. So, a little bit more on the 50 foot right of way at the turnaround versus as depicted on the plan. Uh, the proposed turnaround, again, uh, meets the requirements that a B40 vehicle can negotiate the turns. The dimensions here are slightly different than what's in the, uh, the ordinance because the ordinance diagram starts with a road of 22 feet wide. So it changes slightly how this ends up looking. Uh, same thing with the, the uh, right of way. Uh, that envisions 50 feet, this is 35. We have plenty of room to work here, so 50 feet is no problem. But what we actually did was we ran the right of way, uh, monumentation and right of way, exactly around the impact area so that people in the future working on maintaining this will have a permanent and obvious uh, indication of where the, the extent of the original wetland impact so they don't end up um, working outside of that area. I can go back to the site plan and I'll show that a little better. So we angle this over to meet this portion of the right of way to encompass that bit of uh, uh, culvert inlet. <coughs> you can see where this basically encircles the, the, uh, the extent of the fill. But having said that, um, we've got lots of room here and if the board would prefer 50 feet, then 50 feet is fine as well. Point seven, uh, shoulder width on the detail sheet being indicated as one foot versus two feet as proposed. Uh, this, was just, this was simply an error on the detail. It would be corrected to say two feet. Point eight, a two inch water line across 77 being adequate for the number of potential lots. Um, this was actually based on um, Portland Water District input. Again, Skip met with Robert Bartels and they do know that there's a potential for four lots here. And what they're calling for is a two inch, a two inch copper. However, if they ultimately decide it needs to be bigger, then, yeah, then it, will, it will be bigger. Finally, points 11, 12, and 13 regarding additional stormwater analysis and data. Uh, a couple of points about his letter. Uh, the added impervious surface uh, information uh, was in fact provided on both the uh, site plan and the drainage plan, but we'll make that more clear and we'll include it in the uh, report text. Um, also, uh, we did in fact submit calculations for 25 and 100 year uh, storm events as that's what's required in the RP standards. Um, Mr. Harding, I think accidentally was referring to the lesser events in the stormwater standards, which are two and 25. Um, per Steve's letter, we will uh, also analyze for a two-year event and submit information for flows uh, beyond this area uh, to the 30-inch culvert in Spurwink Avenue. Uh, I'd like to give you a quick explanation of what he means and what we'll be addressing. So first of all, 
this entire, the, the watershed that drains down to Papuda Drive is pretty much all of this area. There's a small area, area between the Rosendo property and the Barker property, which flows north, northwest to a culvert here in Spurwing Gavin. The balance of it, and it ends not too far beyond our property, but uh, the balance of it uh, plus uh, the outflow from Canterbury Way uh, ends up going through a culvert right down here. Uh, there's a DEP stream which begins at, the, at a 24-inch uh, culvert coming across 77 and draining uh, stormwater from Canterbury, and that carries down across this parcel, actually right in through here, and then angles over this way, and then goes to a culvert in Papudic Drive. Our water is, is coming out of our parcel and flowing down here and meeting that, uh, that DEP stream and carrying on with the, the water that's already on its way. This is a site plan of uh, Kraputik Drive. Uh, this was a uh, private way amendment, which was done in 1997. It was, that's how it was structured in the ordinance at that time. Uh, it created these two lots. It also extended this road. So that water comes down from that watershed area down through, right, right about through here, and this is the relevant culvert right here. It's 24 inch smooth bore PVC. The water then uh, leaves this area and there's, there's a, a ditch that runs ex pretty much exactly around this property. It comes over this way and then meets, a, meets the culvert in 77 right here. There's also water that comes down from Papuda Club. Uh, it comes out of their pond by the clubhouse and some other water that joins uh, this flow and goes across Spurlink, but uh, that's downstream from anything that we're talking about here, certainly downstream from this culvert. <coughs> this was all evaluated in 97. Um, this culvert was determined to need to be a 24 inch smooth bore uh, culvert. Uh, and this, this area, this swaled area where the, where the flows go was looked at. And this actually widens out and slows the water down tremendously, so it's less of a concern. The, the big question is, of course, if that 24-inch culvert uh, can handle the water uh, or the increase in the water that we're sending. Uh, we're sending about 0.3 cubic feet per second uh, during the 25-year event. And when this was analyzed back then, it looked like they had a, about a four cubic foot per second reserve in that culvert. So we have engineers working on this. They're going to provide all that stuff for uh, Mr. Harding and for you. Uh, we're, we're quite confident that, um, that that's going to work out. One last thing, the riprap uh, or scour uh, prevention in the culvert. Uh, we would like to uh, consider this. We know it's, it's needed or something's needed. But we'd like to investigate and see what we can come up with uh, that will both be effective, uh, satis satisfy the engineer's concerns, um, but not unduly restrict uh, creature movement through that, <coughs> that culvert. Um, honestly, we put quite a bit of work into uh, making sure we can use a large culvert there, and we don't want to diminish the benefit of that. But in any case, uh, we'd like a little time to figure that out, meet with uh, the engineer, and then come back with something on the on a uh, uh, revised plan before submitting for approval. So to sum up from Mr. Harding's request and everything that I understand right now, uh, we're going to be working on uh, finalizing exact utility design and location, um, have these reviewed by the town engineer, town staff, and include them on the next plan for, uh, for you. Um, additional stormwater data that we, an analysis that we went through. Uh, it's being done now, it will be submitted to Mr. Harding and then the board. Uh, scour protection, as we just said, and proposed, any proposed screening uh, to be depicted once we determine what's going to work best for us and for the abides. Okay. 
think that is the extent of it. Okay, great, thank you. Um, I just want to remind everybody that this is an application for complete lists, um, which means that we are reviewing the application to make sure that it has all the information we need to move forward. Um, at this time, I'd like to open the hearing, uh, the um, meeting to a public hearing. Uh, if anyone wishes to come forward and speak on the matter of completeness of this application, please do so. Hello. Hi, can you say your name? Yes, uh, my name is Craig Ashman. I reside at uh, 10 Perpudic uh, Drive. Um, my wife Kate and I own the property there, which is kind of a butts. I don't have a, I guess I do. Our property line is, runs right here. So this, my house is right here. So this comes pretty, very close to the back of our house. Um, and both Jay and Skip have been over multiple times and kind of talked to us about this, pro um, about the process and what's going on. We're just kind of highly concerned about uh, lights coming down the road, which shine directly into our house uh, or as they turn and whatnot with the, uh, future development of house, th these other houses that are going in with driveways and whatnot, which this allows access to. Um, so we just want to make sure that we've got proper buffering, which I believe they've you know touched on with you know evergreens. I think we talked about arbor vitaes or whatnot and berms and whatnot. Um, also concern of like not increasing that hammerhead much larger and. Um, we also just kind of concerned about you know the wetlands and flow because there's a lot of water flow around there that that's just handled properly because during spring season and thawing and stuff we've got water levels that get pretty high to our road just so that we don't end up with a bunch of issues down the road for that so just kind of our concerns um, and also we if any possibility we'd like hate uh, dirt over pavement in any possible way just for looking at this massive 90 foot T in the back of my yard um, I mean black pavement. So I don't know if there's any consideration that can be taken of a transition down the way. I know that Mr. Clark, I believe, wants pavement due to dust and whatnot, but if we could transition that down toward that T where that massive um, turnaround is going to be located in, like, in my very near backyard, that would be greatly appreciated as well. So just, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else here who wishes to speak on the matter of completeness? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Um, members of the board, any questions, comments? Carol Ann. I'll just, I'll just say I, I find this to be a very thorough submission and uh, the, the questions that were raised are being going to be addressed. So as far as moving the application forward by deeming it complete, that's where I would stand. Anybody else? Jonathan? I just ask one question. This is more for Maureen. Um, Maureen, we received something from the Conservation Committee about recommending additional information provided about scour protection. Um, and I know the applicant just uh, talked a little bit about that, but can you just tell us a little bit? I'm not too familiar with what scour protection is. Certainly. So the Conservation Commission Committee tends to focus on wetland impacts because under the ordinance, they are required to provide you advice for the resource protection permit pro portion of the project. So their focus really was on the proposed culvert that's going to be underneath the proposed road. And as um, Jay uh, explained, that portion of the wetland next down to 10 feet wide, he's proposing an oversized culvert which should help with not concentrating the flows. But there's still gonna be some flows that are coming out of there. Um, and you just need to be making sure as the water is exiting the culvert that it's not eroding the ground. And so um, it's pretty standard for there to be some kind of um, hardening to protect from erosion or scouring. And the applicant has said that they, they will add that to the plants. Right, thank you. Sure. 
Um, it, I have a question for the applicant. So is it your intention to um, revise the plans per the town engineer's comments and also address buffering and be back at the next planning board meeting? Uh, I, I think so, yes. Okay. You know, I have, I, we've got to determine the timing. I, I, I'm going to be out of state for some time here pretty quick. But we'll get together and figure that out. But that would be the goal is to be ready for the next meeting, yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Andrew. Um, I probably disagree a little bit on completeness. I think the process that you're following is good and you're trying to dot your, dot your I's and cross your T's and I think, you know, I prove of all that. I just, I feel like there's enough sort of undone pieces that I feel a little bit uh, uncomfortable to deem it complete. But I, I mean, I think you're getting there, but it just seems like there's too many uh, things that are still up in the air for me to sort of get on board with it fully as deemed complete, but. Carol Ann. The reason I'm, in the past, what we've done as far as uh, we're deeming something complete, we have enough information to move forward. Uh, we're not looking at a napkin with sketches on it. We're looking at some pretty detailed plans. Acknowledging that those plans are not, not thoroughly vetted does not make it incomplete. It just makes it so that the plans need to be, need further work. And if it takes one more iteration or two more iterations or three more iterations to, to get the plans to the point where, where everyone's in agreement, then uh, that's what it takes. But as far as moving this forward uh, by deeming it complete, I don't think this is out of whack with our behavior in the past. Pete. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Caroline. The, uh, um, the all the areas of inquiry have been addressed, and in some of these areas of inquiry, there is additional work to be done. But I, I don't see any area which has not been addressed or has not been addressed up to a threshold level where we can continue the process. So I would be in favor of completeness. Anybody else? I agree with Carol Ann as well. I think that enough work has been done on this to move it forward. Um, would anybody like to make a motion? Jim. Thank you, Carol Ann. A motion for completeness be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jay Cox to extend the Edgecombe Way Private Road located in the area of 75 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to alter 3,988 square feet of RP2 wetland be deemed complete. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All opposed? One opposed? Motion passes. Um, does anybody want a site walk? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like a site walk, but the only concern I have right now with the site walk, and I know there's a timetable, so I, I don't want to delay it too much, but um, I, the big issue here, I think, is the abutting property and the wetland and that water flow. And I'm just a little bit wary about how much of a value of a site walk right now um, it's gonna be because there's gonna be snow on the ground. And that doesn't mean that I'm, I'm saying we have to put this off till summer, but at the same time, I do sort of have a concern on that. And I don't know if Maureen has any input on, on that, if we can see it, but that's just my concern about a site walk right now. Well, obviously, it's it's not the ideal conditions, um, but the board has, in the past, I don't think you've ever held up a a project process um, because of the season. Um, the the applicant did, did say he may have some travel issues, and perhaps if he's not going to be here for the February meeting, this can be delayed one month. Um, I'm not sure if that'll make it better or worse. We know exactly how much snow is out there now, and there could be another foot or two by February. Um, 
It, it, it is up to the board, but like I said, in the past, you, you've, you've soldiered on. And, and I know, I mean, we've done snow uh, sidewalks through the snow numerous times, but just with this one, when the big issue is the RP2 and the water flow, uh, that's just a concern I have, so. Mm -hmm. uh, can I call on Jay? Oh. Okay. Oh. One thing, uh, yeah, happy to, uh, obviously happy to do a sidewalk, but one thing that do have that may be useful for you if you wanted to offer it. Um, I took uh, a number of photographs all over the area. It was right after a recent snow melt, but um, when, the snow, when the, the ground was not covered with snow. So it shows all different angles. It shows the, where the water cuts. It shows where it joins the RP2 stream. I'd be happy to assemble that into some form of information and get it to you with a description of where it's looking and make it as yeah, that could certainly be part of your submission. Um, if we were to go out there, even with the snow, can we see where the channel is? Can't see the. I mean, can there's no real channel. There's an area that's, that gouges when there's a fair amount of rainfall, but it's basically indentation to leaf litter. But you, we can definitely point out where it goes through, um, and you may be able to see depending on when it is, you may be able to see some of the channel. You'll definitely be able to see the, the stream that it enters and see how it orients. And you'll also be able to see uh, where the uh, budding houses are versus this area. But it, it really depends on how much snow is on there, obviously. I mean, so typically in a situation like this, we'd want the property lines flagged so that we can, and May, and the, like the turnaround, we would want flagged and some of the major elements. Um, that, that area has been surveyed pretty well. We can get, I wouldn't say we can get it perfect, but we can get it very, very close. So. Can you what, so what is your timeline? If you don't mind me asking, are you trying to get for February? Wait, there's the wind here when I'm leaving. It could be uh, early next month. In which case, I won't be here. Maybe skip the well. Okay. Yeah. That's why I forgot you have partners. So the February meeting, Jay, is February 25th. It's possible I'll be back by then, actually. That's kind of why I can't answer right now. I'm waiting to get a call from Alaska on exactly when I'll be going on. So we can. We can get together and determine whether we need to be on that agenda between me and Skip and Chris. So I'm just looking at the forecast, and it's supposed to be above freezing uh, for the rest of the week, 39, 37, Thursday and Friday, and then for the weekend, they're talking about snow. That's when we would want to schedule it, isn't it? When it's snowing? <laughs> well, <laughs> Carol Ann said she wanted to do that. <laughs> I got new boots, I'm ready. The meeting's on the 24th. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, February 24th. I pretty much can't do it this week. So this week's out. So do you want to try doing this week or wait till next week? I can't do it this week. Okay. I cannot do it this week. Oh, all right. Except for maybe the end of the day on Sunday. That's when the snow stops. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, strap on the skis. And you can get to Perpudic, right from there. We're skiing from Perpudic. Back country. Maybe something else out. I think the next weekend is fine. So, Saturday, January 25th, is supposed to be a combination of rain and snow. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Sunday afternoon, I can't, I can't. So we'll be looking at February. <coughs> we're going to shoot for the next week. Are we, are we shooting for a weekend? Is that what we're doing just because of daylight? I think we've had good luck with a 530. 
Yeah, Thursday, January 30th is supposed to be 38 degrees. Mm. Uh, by 30, Joe, it's dark it's this time. Dark, yeah. It's dark this time here. It's got to be earlier than that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I, right. We'll be able to see the contours even with snow. I, I think it's just a matter of being able to walk. Yeah, I was thinking if we picked a day that actually had had a couple of days that went above freezing for a couple of days, maybe there'd be enough melting that you could see. And that would be nice too. But you really have to, I mean, five is how, is, that's even pushing it at five, I think. Yeah. No, you've got to be you've, you've got to be out there by four at the at the latest yeah. on Thursday on on any weekday because you know it's late till four thirty but it's you know if you you'd have to be out there no later than four. Well, I'm good till at four for the uh, first week of February. Wednesday, is it? Any of the any. It was the afternoon, Tuesday, Beginning Wednesday. Monday, the 3rd through Friday at 4. Is that okay for you? <laughs> Did you say the 4th, like right before the next meeting? Or? No, 4 p.m. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. The 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. I can't, can't do, do it. I can't do the 3rd, but I can do other times. How about the fourth? For me, but fourth? Yeah. Six or seven. The fourth at four? I can't do the afternoon on the fourth. The but fifth at four? Fifth would be fine. I can, you said February fourth? February, February fifth. 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 Yeah. We're down to fifth. Uh, I can. <laughs> well, if it's a five or it's four, four. Five, four. Yeah, I could do that. Yes. I could do that. I can do it. We got Wednesday the fifth at four. Jay? So the fifth at four. Four p.m. The fifth at four. Fifth at four. And we'll meet at Edgecombe Way. At Ed yes. Should, should we park on the street or should we? Can we pull into the driveway? We can park in Edgecombe Way. Okay. Everybody got that? Thank you. All right. We need another motion. We need a motion. Motion for the board to consider, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Jay Cox to extend the Edgecombe Way private road located in the area 75 Ocean House Road and a resource protection permit to alter 3,988 square feet of RP2 wetland be tabled to the regular February 24th meeting of the planning board at which time a public hearing will be held. We have a second. Jim, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Other business. Um, is anybody here who would like to make a public comment on anything pertaining to the planning board or the town? No? Okay. Don't open it up for that, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need a motion to adjourn and um, then to begin our uh, Motion we adjourn. Sorry. All in favor? Great. It's unanimous. Are we going to stay up? So we are going to move you. on to a workshop. I like that room better. If we turn the microphones,